Since the beginning of the conflict in Ukraine, a lot of people have been comparing it to the war in Iraq. Such comparisons can be often heard from Russians. These conflicts truly have a lot of in common, including the violation of sovereignty by nuclear powers, far-fetched reasons for starting the conflict, mass bombardments of civilian facilities, the reaction of the world community, and even anti-war riots in many countries. However, despite the similarities, these conflicts are quite different, especially when it comes to their preconditions, which we're going to discuss. The first difference is the dictatorship. Iraq had been a dictatorship for many years before the war. Saddam Hussein, with his fellow party members, seized the power in Iraq by means of military coup, which went down in history as the 17th of July Revolution in 1968. Due to struggles in the party, he was gaining more and more power. By 1976 he was the country's leader, and by 1979 he set up the dictatorship. Once he rose to power, Hussein implemented typical dictatorship methods. Crackdown on the opposition, total censorship, mass repressions, expansions into neighboring countries, etc. Hussein's regime was quite violent, and he ruled for about 27 years. Obviously, there has never been anything even close to this regime in Ukraine. There has always been the turnover of power. Only once, President Kuchma was in power for two consecutive terms. Zelensky was elected democratically, and the same goes for the parliament. Both deputies and political parties are constantly changing in the parliament. According to the Democracy Index, Ukraine is a hybrid regime. There are certain problems with human rights and freedom of speech, but it's not even close to being authoritarian. The second difference is aggression against other countries. Ukraine hasn't taken part in any conflicts on other countries' territories since it became independent. The Ukrainian army took part in a couple of peacekeeping missions under the aegis of the United Nations, sending about 200 soldiers. Iraq's foreign policy is pretty aggressive, and the country is constantly in conflict. Saddam Hussein believed in pan-Arabism, so he strived to unite all Arabian countries in one state, which created tension even among allies. However, the Gulf War was the most famous conflict provoked by Hussein. The Iraqi army invaded Kuwait and wanted to annex its land. Iraq promoted the narrative that Kuwait is some sort of an ancestral Iraqi land, and it should not exist as a separate country. Saddam Hussein accused Kuwait of stealing Iraqi oil, and that became the reason for the conflict. Internal problems in Iraq also played their part. A long war between Iran and Iraq caused economic problems in the country. Hussein wanted to use the war to increase his popularity and get a hold of significant oil supply in Kuwait. So, Iraq waged war on Kuwait and could have easily taken it. But thankfully, the United Nations interfered. The UN condemned the invasion of an independent country, and a huge coalition, comprised of a dozen countries which stood up for Kuwait, was created. The Iraqi army was defeated, however Saddam Hussein's regime was not destroyed, despite all the discussions in the USA about invading Iraq. Americans decided not to invade its territory, though they could have done it, and they had the permission from the UN. Moreover, back in 1988, Iraqi government used chemical weapons against Kurdish civilians. This event is known as the Halabja chemical attack. It resulted in the deaths of 3 to 5,000 people, and about 10,000 were listed as wounded. As a result, this attack of Kurdish people was condemned and officially declared genocide. Moving on to the invasion itself, we should compare the two presidents' speeches announcing it. Bush's and Putin's speeches. Actually, they're quite similar. Both appeal to the same points like democracy, freedom, people's fate, and both critique the current regime, calling it a dictatorship. Obviously, these justifications are quite controversial. However, in general, Bush's appeal to democracy and freedom sounds consistent and logical, if we take into account the traditions of American politics. They are the cornerstone of both political parties there. On the other hand, Putin's similar speech about democracy and freedom is confusing, considering the current regime in Russia. Putin has been holding on to power for 22 years. Elections are non-existent, all opposition is eliminated, and all the media are controlled by the state. The situation in Ukraine is much better, even though it's being accused of being a dictatorship. Elections are held regularly, 
there is real rotation of power. Before the conflict, a pro-Russian party was the second one in the parliament, and media outlets are not being silenced. So Putin's appeal to freedom and democracy, and him blaming Ukraine for being a dictatorship, sounds unconvincing, to say the least. As for the Allies, Russia seems to have no obvious ones in this conflict. Even Belarus, that is completely dependent on Russia, didn't come into open conflict. Though in the beginning there were some attacks from its territory, and even now there's fire on Ukrainian land from Belarus's side. Members of the Collective Security Treaty Organization even refused to discuss this topic during their last meeting. Although the war in Iraq created considerable tension among the USA's allies, Germany and France were against it, it showed that there were a significant number of allies who approved of this operation and even took part in it. The UK, Australia and Poland took part in the invasion directly, while a number of European countries showed their support of the USA's operation. As for the international relations and the justification of the invasion, Russia used its right to self-defense enshrined in Article 51 of the Charter of the UN, arguing that they are helping friendly republics, DPR and LPR. Putin has also mentioned a so-called preemptive strike. Countries often use this article to justify their aggression. However, it raises the question of using it to protect unrecognized republics. Moreover, Russia has not provided the UN with any proof of Ukraine's upcoming attacks on unrecognized republics or Russia itself. That's why the question of the preemptive strike is unproven. During their invasion of Iraq, the USA also didn't fully apply with international agreements, which caused a lot of criticism from their allies. American politicians were constantly drawing attention to the UN Resolution 1441 which renewed the inspections of Iraq's territory concerning the non-proliferation of weapons of mass destruction and long-range missiles. Iraq was constantly disrupting these inspections, which led to the invasion and the accusations concerning weapons of mass destruction and chemical warfare. The latter, as we mentioned before, was used by Hussein's regime against the Kurds. Afterwards, the UN criticized the USA, Despite the fact that Iraq indeed wasn't complying with the UN resolution, it didn't give the US any rights to invade Iraq without additional red tape. So Americans referred to an even older resolution which was carried on Kuwait. As we can see, the course of hostilities differs significantly. The operation in Iraq only lasted for 42 days, and its capital, Baghdad, was taken on the 24th day after the start of the operation. Though the Iraqi army represented considerable force and was in the top world armies, it wasn't able to fight Allied forces effectively. The Americans used advanced weaponry, including aviation and guided missiles, which allowed them to finish the operation quickly. The USA suffered a very small number of casualties. All Allied forces lost about 200 soldiers and more than 500 were wounded. As for the Iraqi army and paramilitary group's casualties, the data varies from a couple of thousands to dozens of thousands. Casualties among civilians amount to 3 to 7,000 people. The conflict in Ukraine took a completely different turn, though at the beginning it seemed that the operation in Ukraine may end in a month or two, after six months of prolonged hostilities it became clear that it turned into some sort of trench warfare. None of the parties can make a significant move into enemy's territory. There's no official data on casualties. Different sources estimate them as dozens of thousands killed. The UN provided some intermediate data on civilian casualties. It reported 5,100 people killed. The problem with these numbers is that they don't take into account the data from occupied territories. For example, the assault on Mariupol was estimated to claim more than 10,000 civilian lives. In summary, although the conflicts in Iraq and Ukraine have some common elements, they are quite different. Unlike Ukraine, Iraq had established a long-term dictatorship, which declared wars against neighboring countries. The course of hostilities also differs significantly both in the speed of campaigns and the fact that the USA had allies in the conflict. Though international organizations did not approve of both conflicts, they had many claims to Hussein's government, which didn't fulfill international obligations. 
This video was made possible thanks to our sponsors on Patreon, Boosty and YouTube. If you like our content, please consider supporting us.